we've covered how to prevent the first step of atherosclerosis, decrease the level of bad cholesterol in our blood. What about blocking some of these other steps downstream? Both common and specialty mushrooms inhibit adhesion molecule expression and in vitro binding of monocytes to human aortic endothelial cells in a pro-inflammatory environment. Uh, so that means mushrooms may help block both this step and this step. Basically, what these researchers at Arizona State did was take the lining of a human artery, soak it overnight with either nothing, the control group, or shiitake mushrooms, crimini mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, mayatake mushrooms, or plain white button mushrooms. Then they took away the mushrooms, washed the artery off, and then added some monocytes before and after inflammation. So what we'd like to see is these bars come down, less monocyte adhesion. So instead of being sucked into the walls of our arteries, they can go off and do their business elsewhere. Which mushroom do you think worked the best? They all worked, but in another victory for this little fungi, plain old cheap white button mushrooms worked the best. And under inflammatory conditions, they found the same thing, but shiitake didn't even seem to work much at all. The health implications are that diverse mushrooms, including common and specialty mushrooms, can protect against cardiovascular disease by interfering with events that contribute to atherogenesis. There's lots of products that promise to boost our immune system, and who wouldn't want that? Well, there's millions of people with autoimmune diseases, inflammatory diseases, and allergies. Right? Millions of people whose immune systems may already be a bit too active. I try to make sufferers of seasonal allergies feel better by explaining that having an overactive immune system is not all bad. Individuals with allergies have a decreased risk for cancer compared with the general population. Yes, your immune system may be in such overdrive it's attacking things left and right like tree pollen, but that heightened state of alert might also help bring down some budding tumors in the body. So it's tricky. We want to boost the part of the immune system that fights infection, while downregulating the part that results in chronic inflammation. And mushrooms may fit the bill. There are thousands of edible mushrooms, though only about 100 are cultivated commercially, only 10 of those really on an industrial scale. And I do mean industrial, rising to over 20 million tons. And for good reason. They accelerate immunoglobulin A secretion. Let me explain. Though skin is considered our largest organ, we actually interface with the outside world more through our mucous membranes that line our mouth, our entire digestive tract, our reproductive and urinary systems, inside the breast glands, on our eyeballs, uh, occupying our largest body surface area. Our gut alone covers more area than a tennis court, and much of it is only one cell thick. One microscopic layer is all that separates us from all the toxins, viruses, and bacteria out there, and so we need one heck of a first-line defense. And that defense is called IgA, immunoglobulin A. Immunoglobulin means uh, antibody. These are our type A antibodies. Dietary intake may improve mucosal immunity by accelerating IgA secretion, but no studies have ever been conducted on mushrooms until now. So they had half people eat their normal diet, half eat their normal diet, plus cooked white button mushrooms every day for a week, then, using the passive dribble method for collecting saliva, they just measured the amount of IgA they were pumping out. No change in the control group, but after a week of mushrooms, IgA secretion jumped 50%, and even stayed up there for a week after they stopped eating the mushrooms. This study has shown, for the first time, that dietary intake of white button mushrooms, just regular white mushrooms, about a cup a day, resulted in higher IgA secretion and the elevated secretion remained stable into week two, but then fell back to baseline. So this suggests that in arresting or slowing the decrease in IgA in individuals such as the elderly or those with immune compromise, a continuous daily intake of mushrooms may be necessary to maintain an increased IgA secretion, 
meaning you can't just eat mushrooms once and expect to be protected forever. You have to make them part of your regular diet. But if you continue to churn out 50% more antibodies, might that contribute to chronic inflammation, which is implicating the development of a variety of diseases? No, in fact, mushrooms appear to have an anti-inflammatory capacity in vitro, suggesting that they could be regarded as a potential source of natural anti-inflammatory agents. For example, here's an inflammatory response without mushrooms and with mushrooms, right? both white and a few other varieties. They think it might be the phytonutrient pyrogallol, found in a variety of mushrooms, as well as in our old friend amla, Indian gooseberries, that similarly appear to reduce inflammation while at the same time boosting immune and anti-cancer function. If you remember, plain, cheap, convenient white mushrooms appeared able to outsmart breast cancer cells that try to make their own estrogen by crippling the enzyme tumors use to make it. But this was based on placental tissue samples. Let's stack mushrooms up against the real thing. Human breast cancer cells in a petri dish, if you do nothing, they just keep growing and proliferating at the same rate. But if you add the raw material, they cancer cells use to make their own estrogen, they take full advantage and grow like crazy ten times as fast. But then, as you add more and more white mushroom extract to shut off estrogen manufacturing, you can get cancer growth almost back to baseline. So the last study proved mushrooms could inhibit that enzyme, and even figured out which mushroom worked the best. Here they went a step further to see it in action in actual breast cancer cells. Now that we know it may work, what's the required dose? I mean, how many mushrooms do you have to eat? Maybe it's some you know, ridiculous amount. Based on these studies, the consumption of just five mushrooms a day may be sufficient to suppress breast tumor growth. In this landmark study to find out which vegetable was best at suppressing the activity of the enzyme used by breast cancer cells to undermine our defenses, mushrooms came out number one. But that was just for plain white mushrooms. If that's how regular mushrooms roll, then think how good the exotic varieties may do. So they put them to the test, comparing regular mushrooms to wood ear, criminy, oyster mushrooms, Italian brown, and gnocchi, Button mushrooms, which are just baby versions of regular white mushrooms. Stuffing mushrooms, which are just big white mushrooms. Shiitake, chanterelle, and portobello. We already know what this one is here. Remember, 60 to 65% drop. White mushrooms, the original. Uh, most of these other mushrooms are stuck up there in celery carrot land, but one beat out our regular fun guy. Which one do you think it was? Wood ear, criminy, oyster, Italian brown, enoki, button stuffing, shiitake, chanterelle, or portobello? I never would have guessed this one. Better than plain white mushrooms? Big plain white mushrooms. In conclusion, these studies suggest the daily intake of the common white button mushroom may have a significant cancer preventive effect with regard to breast cancer development. White button mushrooms are relatively inexpensive and readily available in markets across the United States, and therefore are a feasible addition to any dietary plan.
harmful, harmless, or helpful raw mushrooms. I got an email from someone last year saying that Dr. Joel Furman told his patients to stop eating raw mushrooms out of fear of a natural toxin in regular white mushrooms called agaritine, which is essentially destroyed by cooking. Now, I get crazy emails all the time about doctors spouting all sorts of nonsense, but I have tremendous respect for Dr. Furman, so I took it seriously enough to research the topic, and what do you think I found? Raw mushrooms. Harmful, harmless, or helpful? Has Furman just drank one too many of his blended salads, or is he really on to something? He's right. Mushrooms have all sorts of amazing health benefits, but eat them cooked.